From brushing and flossing to straightening and whitening, people today often put a lot of work into maintaining the health and appearance of their smile. The current trend is for straight, pearly white teeth, but the history of dental care stretches all the way back to the beginning of human society and goes to some very unusual places. So, today, we're going to rattle off some fascinating facts about the history of dentistry. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what other everyday-related topics you would like to hear about. Okay, so let's take a look at those chompers. Open wide. Prehistoric humans who lived before the advent of oral care actually had very few dental problems. Scientists believe this is on account of their diet, which consisted exclusively of unprocessed, fibrous foods that helped clean their teeth while they ate. However, as humans evolved, so did what was on the menu. Over time, people found if they didn't take care of their teeth, they developed dental problems. Archaeologists have found evidence that early humans cleaned their teeth by picking at them with things like porcupine quills, animal bones, and tree twigs. As early as 3500 BCE, Mesopotamians were using chew sticks to clean their teeth. The Egyptians and Chinese are known to have used them as well. Ancient people were always aware of tooth decay, but the first known scientific theory about its causes dates back at least 5,000 years to ancient Samaria. The theory was that cavities are caused by a creature known as the tooth worm, which they believed would bore holes in teeth. Don't laugh, it's not as silly as it sounds. Cavities can actually resemble the kinds of holes worms bore through other materials, like wood. The Sumerians, Greeks, Egyptians, Chinese, Japanese, and Indian people all believed in the tooth worm. While it sounds like an ancient superstition to us today, some European doctors were actually still warning people that worms were the cause of their tooth decay as late as the 14th century. Though no one knows exactly when people started brushing their teeth, archaeologists believe the practice originated somewhere in the neighborhood of 3000 BCE. The Babylonians and Egyptians were the first cultures we know of to fashion rudimentary toothbrushes, which were made mostly from twigs. The first known bristle toothbrush, resembling the kind we still use today, was created in China sometime during the Tang Dynasty, between the 7th and 10th centuries. It was made from hog bristles, which would have been attached to a handle carved from bone or bamboo. Explorers eventually brought these to the West, and in the 17th century, they began to be adopted in Europe. The oldest known dental filling, made from beeswax, was found in a 6,500-year-old jawbone, discovered by archaeologists in Slovenia in 2012. It's unknown how widespread this method was, but we do know that by the 16th century BCE, the Egyptians were regularly using dental fillings, although they were really only available to the wealthy. The Egyptian fillings were made in a wide variety of ways and from a wide variety of materials. One was a mixture of ground barley mixed with honey and yellow ochre, which was also useful for holding loose teeth in place. Another way was to fill cavities with bits of linen. Evidence for this latter ancient dental practice was first found in the teeth of a 2100-year-old mummy. In numerous cultures, the conditions of one's teeth is intimately connected to their social status. Bright white teeth are considered a status symbol today, but they weren't always. In ancient Etruscan society, for example, the upper classes often had their teeth removed and replaced with flashy gold facsimiles long before Big Daddy Kane or Flavor Flav. According to one anthropologist, wealthy Etruscan women would deliberately have their teeth extracted so they could be fitted with an appliance made from a gold band, which would hold their replacement teeth. Etruscans would buy these appliances directly from goldsmiths, and they were not cheap. Roman women also underwent such procedures. The famous poet Marshall saw such behavior as vanity and mocked the women of his society for it. He facetiously pointed out that while ladies may be able to replace their hair and teeth at the marketplace, they were stuck with their original eyes, since no one was selling new ones. Decorating one's teeth wasn't only popular with the Etruscans and Romans. In the 14th century, various Southeast Asian cultures would also develop an affinity for gold teeth. 
For example, many Filipino people were moved to imitate the legendary look of their god, Melu, who was famous for his mouth of gold teeth. Meanwhile, over in Mesoamerica, the Mayan people also took great pride in the appearance of their mouths. Mayans would often file their teeth down and decorate them with minerals. Ornate inlays would be fashioned by boring holes in the teeth with copper tubes. The holes were then filled with precious stones like jade. Turquoise and quartz were also popular. Unlike the Roman and Etruscan practices, the Mayan modifications weren't simply a matter of style, they were undertaken for ritual and religious purposes. Mayans may have liked gems in their teeth, but that wasn't everyone's cup of tea. The Japanese, for example, had a completely different style. As far back as the 8th century in Japan, women would practice ohaguro, or teeth blackening. Fashions at the time called for women to use makeup to paint their faces pale white. The problem was, the white makeup made the women's teeth appear yellow. By dyeing their teeth black, women would heighten the contrast between their teeth and the white makeup. To accomplish the teeth blackening, Japanese women would drink a mixture of tea or sake mixed with oxidized iron. This would have to be repeated every few days in order to keep the teeth black. While the practice originated with aristocratic upper classes, by the 18th century, teeth blackening became associated with geishas. In 1870, the Japanese government banned the practice. Japanese women went to great lengths to dye and keep their teeth black, but other women wound up with black teeth for far less deliberate reasons. For example, Queen Elizabeth of England. Sugar became incredibly popular in Tudor-era England, and not being well understood at the time, it wreaked havoc on many people's teeth. Queen Elizabeth is said to have eaten so much of the stuff, her teeth actually turned black. This is attested to by a German visitor to Elizabeth's court, who wrote that the 65-year-old queen's teeth were black, a fault the English seemed to suffer from because of the great use of sugar. While she probably could have received the best dental care available at the time, Elizabeth didn't do anything about her problem because she was utterly terrified of dentists. In her entire life, she had only a single rotten tooth pulled. In all fairness, it wasn't just Elizabeth that had a wicked sweet tooth. 17th century Europeans in general just loved dessert. Of course, sugar was so expensive, it was primarily consumed by the wealthy. The overindulgence led to dental problems and cavities came to be seen as a royal disease. In something that sounds like a Monty Python movie, the look became fashionable and people of lower social standing actually took to blackening their own teeth in imitation of the wealthy. Viking warriors were known for a lot of cool things, and while the part about the cool horn helmets isn't really true, the part about them ruthlessly plundering Europe for hundreds of years is. When it came to their dental work, evidence shows that Vikings were really into modifying their teeth. For example, at one Viking site, anthropologists found multiple human skulls with horizontal grooves filed into the front teeth. An examination showed that they were deliberately made. Although their exact purpose is unclear, one generally well-regarded theory holds that they were for social identification and would have marked the individual to his peers as a warrior or a tradesman. Dentures are believed to have originated with the ancient Etruscans over 2,500 years ago, and by the Renaissance, they were common among wealthy Europeans. Some sets of this era were made from ivory or carved animal bones, but others are known to have incorporated human teeth. These teeth typically came from the poor, who could make money by selling their teeth to rich people. They also sometimes were pulled from the dead, which sounds like a plot from a horror film from the 80s. Speaking of dentures made from real human teeth, America's A number one founding father, George Washington himself, only had one tooth left in his head when he was inaugurated as president. He owned four sets of dentures, which were likely made from teeth purchased mostly from his slaves. One of these sets, made from ivory, lead, human teeth, and animal teeth, is still on display at his Mount Vernon estate. History records that he didn't like them very much. Washington would constantly complain that his dentures were uneasy in the mouth and bulged his lips out. Nonetheless, teeth were an important status symbol at the time, and Washington was very conscious of his appearance, so he wore them. It is also possible that Washington underwent a tooth transplant, as his dentist, Jean-Pierre Le Meilleur, advertised expertise in such procedures. 
1784, Washington is known to have purchased nine teeth, at least some of which came from people he had enslaved. Though it can't be proven definitively, it's believed these teeth may have been used for the transplant. In modern times, the dental ideal is considered to be a bright smile with straight white teeth. People will wear braces, use whiteners, or do pretty much whatever else they need to to achieve the look. But most don't realize it's a relatively new fashion. The popularity of the look really only goes back to the 20th century and was greatly created by Hollywood movies. The trend arguably began with veneers, created by a cosmetic dentist named Marcus Pincus in the 1940s. They were sported by movie stars like Shirley Temple and Judy Garland, who became famous for having perfect smiles. While mass market teeth whitening products didn't become a thing until the 1980s, teeth whitening itself is nothing new. Ancient Romans are known to have whitened their own teeth with their own urine. You let me know how that goes. So what do you think? In what era would your teeth feel most at home? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.